Hello, and welcome back to Hold On I'm Talking, brother. My name is Joe Greenwood, and you are listening to our end of year review for the year 2022, as well as a prediction for 2023. Can't believe we finally made it through this year, Tom. We've done more episodes this year than any other year. In fact, we've only done two years, but still, it's something. Um... What a great, what a good year I think this has been for the pod for the pod. Yeah, I think breakout star is nailed down. Hold on, I'm talking about <laughs> from from nothing to 15 subscribers now, Joe. We're we're rocking, we're rolling onwards and upwards. Um, but in the in the UFC, in the sport of MMA, it's been another great year. It rarely disappoints. Yeah. There are ups and downs, but overall, wow. I w- what a time it is to be a fan of this sport. I would say that this year I would say the highs were a bit higher than the previous year. Um, didn't have as many lows, but I think it had like a nice sort of consistency to it. There wasn't like a cra- I didn't feel like there was like a crazy period where it was just like, oh my god, great fights every week because they're still running in the apex and they've stopped caring about <laughs> about doing that sort of thing. But it's been, I would say, a good year. And Tom, we're going to start our review of the year with a bang with our finish of the year a lot of a uh, lot of really skillful incredible finishes this year tom do you want to go first do you want to get reveal your finish of the year first well i don't expect a prolonged discussion on this one joe i got to be honest mm. uh, because if you disagree with me here i'm stopping this recording right now <laughs> and i'm putting an ad out advert out for a new co-host uh, joe there's only one man who can win this award it's leon edwards for his head kick knockout of the undisputed pound for pound king, Kamaru Usman, yeah. a man who hadn't been beaten in the UFC, a man who was in the fifth round, just minutes away from another cruising dominant victory. But our man, he changed the changed the story. He had, I mean, we'll talk about the cornering in a second, but he scouted it out. Knew that he dipped his head that way, threw a beautiful faint combo to then disguise the left high kick coming behind it as Usman leant into it and his soul left his body and he folded to the floor. You don't see guys fold like that and you normally don't see champions fold like that either where his knees sort of crumpled at the same time and he went backwards and no follow-up shots either. A beautiful, clean knockout from Edwards. Technically superb and emotionally incredible highlighted more so by the commentary by john annick in which rogan and cormier saying i think edwards has given up now dean thomas saying i think edwards has given up and mere seconds before he lands the knockout annick drops the line but that is not the cloth from which he is cut no. that is a de- oh! And he lands the knockout and Anik loses it. The belt's coming home to the UK and boy did it. I just, just it's emotional. I get emotional just thinking about it. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, it's beautiful because like, you positioned it really well there, Joe. Leon, he had fallen again. Yeah. The nearly man, the also ran. He had missed his chance. Yeah. He looked crestfallen. He'd been going back to his corner, a beaten man and... Let me tell you, Dana White wasn't queuing up to give Leon Edwards another title no. shot. No, this was his this was his moment. Yeah, and um, yeah, given what it means for us back in the UK, the second man to top the mountain after Michael Bisping. Um, now, Bisping got there kind of through the back door, but Edwards he smashed and grabbed it from the big man, from the main man. Mm. No questions can be asked uh, after that. No, and wow, it's uh, queues up for a very interesting year now for Leon Edwards Absol- going into 2023. Absolutely, absolutely. Cannot wait. March in London. <sighs> Send the pass passes through. Dana, <laughs> <they're ready. laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I, I think just that cornering as well from his longtime boxing coach. You know where he told the story of like when he first met Edwards as a teenager. You know, and he sort of trained him a bit. And, you know, his relationship with him where he's not there for, like, the technical stuff so much. He's more there for the keeping him in the game, 
making sure he's aware of what's going on. He te- he says that the scoring's his thing. He needs he keeps Edwards in line with where he is in the fight, and he dropped all that and just gave him a right old rollicking. I'll drop it right here for you listeners. Listen, stop feeling sorry for you. Oh, f- well, come on then. What's wrong with you? You two now you got a ball of f- out of fire. Stay sure. Come on, Leon, man. You got it, man. Come on. You got this. Stop shooting the pressure, though. Yeah. Come on, Leon. Come on, Leon. Come on, Leon. Let's go. You had him, man. Then do it again. Okay. Um, just. Just a just a great. Never mind. Finish. It's the best moment of the year. It's the best moment, yeah, and it allows us to give out the best montage of the year to that man on Twitter who put it up against the Rocky theme. Tune. Yes, yes, great, absolutely fantastic. Uh, if that hadn't happened, if Usman had gone on to comfortably yes. seal victory, Joe, who would you be looking at uh, for knockout of the year? I, I have it down as finish. Uh, but if we're going to go with oh knockout though oh well open question if you raise an interesting one my finish, my second favorite finish was Makachev over Oliveira the um, left straight right hook that he drew Oliveira in the whole time the knockdown and then the head and arm choke that he got because you know he subbed the guy who has the most subs in the UFC. And people talked about like he subbed him fast yeah he subbed him damn fast and like people kept going on about like the strength that he displayed. But it's the technique was just superb. How he slipped off of him, and Oliveira knew immediately he was cooked, and tapped. I just thought it was a masterful performance. Like it might be the best, one of the best performances of the year. Um, but yeah, that was that was the one that popped into my head. Um, what about you? Oh, definitely a great moment. We'll be talking about that man again later on, I suspect. So yeah, yeah, great, great submission. Uh, now I picked something that broke my heart a little bit, Joe. <laughs> was yeah. something that uh, I in blocked the moment, it out <laughs> <laughs> I found to be disgusting and I turned away from the television I hadn't actually seen it really since mm. uh, but it's undeniable in its vulgar spectacularity mm. and that is the front kick knockout Michael Chandler on Tony Ferguson yeah it's <laughs> god it, it was like something from a movie like it was it, it was it was ridiculous, uh, and then outrageous, uh, outrageous, just the <laughs> violence, the way Ferguson folded forwards, the air going out of the room, the crestfallen kind yeah. of crowd around we, after Tony had built up after a good first yeah, round. Yeah, yeah, he made he made Michael Chandler have to shoot on him, like he you know, and Chandler just came back and just steamrolled <laughs> him with a kick that apparently he never throws because it hurts too much. Um, I, I don't know. It was, um, yeah. I, I have somewhat blocked it out, but that was one as well. And then when you mentioned like knockout, um, I've got to say the uh, the recent one of Pavlovich on Tui Vasa popped into my head as well. Of like, like truly insane. Like I can't believe what I'm watching. Sort of finish. Well, hold your horses there, Joe. We'll be talking about that man as well yeah. later on. Um, there's another one I'm, I was going to mention. But I'm going to save that for later as well because it will come up. Right, Tom, let's move on to the Best Division Award. Now, with this, we're not just looking at title fights. We're not just looking at contenders. We're looking at like the, some of those deep cuts as well. We're looking for depth and quality here. And there are a couple divisions that offer that. I would say three that truly offer that. There's some that Give offer... Give of those, Joe. Well, the three that are good ones. The three good ones. Uh, going up in size, flyweight, bantamweight, lightweight. Um, everything else is a combination of very good to meme funny to terrible. So it's. Uh... <laughs> Are you saying that there's a direct co- correlation with the weight increasing? You plot <laughs> yes! these things out on the graph. Listen, ability. If you've got a fighter like Tai Tuivasa in your division, then there is a qu- there's uh, some quality issues there. But anyway, Tom, best division of the year. I'm just going to come out and say it right now. Lightweight division is the best division of the year. Some tremendous contenders coming through. Uh, some very good title fights as well, as we mentioned, Makachev versus Oliveira, but also Gaethje versus Oliveira as well this year, which, again, was going to be one of my uh, potential honourable mentions for finish of the year. But um, the violence weight division, that's that really delivered this year. There was only a couple fights in it. You know, you had... 
Chandler Ferguson, you had Chandler Poirier, Gaethje Oliveira, but my word, well, Dariush Gamrot as well. It was nice to see Benny Dariush out there. Uh, Sarukian and, and Gamrot as Sarukian, well. Sarukian, Gamrot. Just, I feel like at the high end, lightweight truly delivered. And even a bit further down, we had some cracking, cracking fights as well. Yeah, we Fiziv RDA. Um, what's the one that's uh, that's just popped into my head there that I've just blanked on for a moment? Oh, Kuta Teladze versus, um, not Sarukian, uh, Ismagulov was the other mm-hmm. one that popped into my head. Really interesting contenders coming through. A refresh of the division, and it's always exciting that, to see. I think that I think you hit the nail on the head with your last comment there, Joe. The division has been they've they've cleared out the um, the old <laughs> guard, let's say, or most of the old guard, the ones that have really fallen off the horse. Yeah. And uh, now that division is alive, but you've still got your kind of cult heroes. You've still got Dan Hooker lurking around in there. Not not unreasonable. You still got Michael Chandler. You still got Poirier and Gaethje up at the top. Doba, come on, man, he had a great year. Three knockouts, Joe. Can't. Can't hate on the man anymore. No. Um, you know, he's, Come around. he's coming. He's coming. Ranked at number fourteen now. No, I think uh, I think you've definitely made a good case for lightweight there, Joe. I'm not going to surprise you with this. Mm. Bantamweight. It's, Joe, I'm all about it. That's your I'm division of the year. Ab- well, it's my division of the decade, Joe, and I'm going to just stay loyal to it. Ooh. It's not been as explosive at the top. Mm. Absolutely. But I just look at the potential for this division, the future matchups, mm. and uh, and it's got me tingling. It's also unpredictable. Yeah. Now let me just get get onto that right now. Aljamain Sterling beats Petter Yan, sits atop the division, suddenly looks kind of dominant. Yeah. Who's gonna Who's gonna top Aljamain Sterling? Who could have predicted that at the beginning of the year? That's true. That is true. Also. There's a thing with bantamweight now, and we have it on the pod, where we look at these cards, and it's just like, wait a second, who are these bantamweights we've never heard of? And it's slightly like exciting it to see. It doesn't stop. No. It just keeps coming, Joe. Yeah, who's that? Um, they had uh, the fights on the last card, where we were kind of like, well, whatever about it. And then we saw the bantamweights, were just like, immediately, they were the first fights in the UFC. It was the yeah. South African guy who got that submission. Um, uh, what's his name? Um, yeah. He, he- <sighs> Gordon he opened the early prelims. Yes. Yeah, yeah the young, that guy. The young fella. Mm-hmm. Um, but on the same card, you had Saeed Nurmagomedov. He fought off a great challenger, another debutant, I believe, dominant wrestler. Yeah. Somewhere from Central Asia, Joe. They're just, it's just non-stop. And also a potential fight of the year candidate in Petter Yan versus Sean O'Malley. As well. 100%. And knockout of the year. You look at Chris Gutierrez and Frankie Edgar. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Beautiful technique in that division, up and down. Up and down, and great variety, and some really interesting dark horses as well. Got to talk about it as well. March main event set: Marlon Vera versus Corey Sandhagen. My word, my word! It doesn't get better than that. Have they announced where that's going to take place? No, what, slight worry. It's in the apex, but put that in front of a crowd, man. What are you doing? Get that division out there in front of a crowd. Yeah, amazing stuff. Uh, what about an honourable mention? Well, I said well, it. You, we, 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 yeah, you said it. Um, again, we're gonna we're gonna come on to that later on. Oh, mm-hmm. honorable mention for me was the flyweight division. Now let's go into disappointment. Tom, I'm gonna take the bull by the horns here, and I'm gonna give you my biggest disappointment straight up. Bantamweight division title fights were the biggest disappointment this year for me. First off, we only had two. The first one being Sterling versus Jan. Contentious decision in which the discourse around it was. Uh, the idea that it was a robbery. I hate that sort of talk, for the most part. Really dislike it, and I dislike it when that becomes the main narrative of a fight. And also, TJ Dillashaw waiting everybody's time with that title fight. I get why he did it, but I'm talking about my entertainment here. Not for me. Really, really annoyed me. Because now we're waiting on Sterling, who says he's going to face Cejudo in March. Uh, And then, that's it, he's going to move up to featherweight. So we've potentially now, he could have had a really interesting contender for that second fight. Could have been Marlon Vera, maybe. Someone like that. And then if he beat mm-hmm. him... Sean O'Malley, of course. Sean O'Malley, he could have beat him and then beat Cejudo. Imagine that as your resume of beating Jan, Cejudo and O'Malley. That would be a really, really good run. But instead he's got like a weird, crippled Dillashaw that he had to beat instead. So that's my biggest disappointment because my expectations are so high. 
Tom, what about yourself? You're putting Aljamain Sterling to blame for that. No, I blame the UFC for matchmaking. For, well, no. For letting Aljamain Sterling fight for a title in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I kind of blame Petter Yan for throwing that knee, but that's, again, you know, not to... Shouldn't go too what far. Could, what could have been, yeah, exactly. Those are... Murky waters once you go down that road. Yeah. Um, no, very valid comment, Joe. And, and you're right. Uh, and hence why, of course, you didn't give it uh, a division of the year. Yes. Uh, because it was a bit lacking. Uh, I, can't, I can't defend it. I yeah. can't defend it. And looking ahead to this year, as you say, it does, it's, not, it's not lining up so well. Mm. So um, we'll see. That, that is a note of concern. My disappointment, Joe... I've got three things written down. Oh, my word. And two of them, uh, like, co-inspire together. uh, They're kind of one and the same. All Uh, right. I've gone for UFC judging. Okay. Now, our familiar theme on disappointments in the sport (laughs) is the judging. Because we just cannot get it right. And there's no hint of reforms down the line no um however we did just have your man called up for his judging after that uh, Bell- bellator fight we talked about that in an earlier pod yeah um now the the other disappointment i've got here which goes along with the judging is paddy pimlet um, oh interesting what, do, yeah so joe look i gotta say we've we've talked about paddy quite a lot everybody's talking about paddy yeah and after his performance in London, where he submitted Gordon uh, Levitt, mm-hmm. it's definitely not Gordon, no. Jordan. <laughs> yes. Jordan Levitt gave that very powerful post speech uh, press conference where he, where he spoke up for mental health. Yeah. Uh, it was very raw, and you realize what he was dealing with going into the fight really made that performance that much better. Yeah. Joe, so it was so good. It was so raw. It was so emotional. Yeah. That I boarded the train. Yeah. Yeah. And we were chewing along and it all was good. There were a few uncomfortable moments. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anytime you listen to Paddy in an inf- uh, interview. Yeah. Being those uncomfortable moments. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, because of that performance, um, I just I stuck with it. I kept riding. Choo-choo. We're, we're off. And then we got to that fight with uh, Jared Gordon. That whole week. Yeah. It was bad, wasn't it? It was bad. It's, I mean, the bloom is very much off the rose with him. At least in terms of my fandom and my enjoyment of the sport, it's it really did take a hit with Paddy, um, and it's all of his own making. It's all of his own making. If you look at Sean O'Malley after he beat Jan, he was very honest, and he was just like, "I've got no idea. Like maybe I won, maybe not. It was close." And that is an honest reaction. And people are like, "That's him admitting that he didn't win." You're a dickhead if you think that, right? <laughs> he was in that moment. You have no idea what he's feeling. And he's he was clearly thinking, like, I've got no idea. No one could know, really, because of how close that fight was. But Paddy claiming, oh, I won the first two and took the third off. First off, Dana hates that sort of thing, apparently, but not with Paddy. And then Dana getting his messaging wrong and going, like, oh, Gordon blew it on the third when apparently Paddy took it off. Yeah, it was just a hideous week. And now it's got to the point now it's... Please, Terence McKinney, can you chin this man for us? Like it's, I just don't want to like think about him in terms of rankings or anything. Well, that's the, and that's just it. You know, you you start to believe that you you start to think. Well, hold on. All right, yeah, I see some weaknesses, but <laughs> some. <laughs> but where, where yeah, but where can this go? Uh, you know, it was exciting. It was starting to become undeniable after that uh, performance against Jordan Levitt, and now you're thinking like, wow, this this man is shot. He can he can't can't enter the rankings we seem to have found his ceiling mm. and it's such a definitive change between those two fights yeah and then of course yeah the as you referenced the i mean the comments and in the interviews the kind of native nativism the hint the comments about Tapuri's nationality yeah the press conferences and god that post-fight interview was uh, just a car crash mm. calling for calling him fight fight of the night what do you think what do you think yeah. fight of the night lads <laughs> yeah grim Grim, and then also exercise and delusion, and then doubly grim when you had the British MMA media somewhat defending him, like the BT guys going on there, going like, "Well, Gordon didn't go out there to try and win it. What did Paddy do, lads? Come on, it was it was a bit yeah. pathetic, wasn't it? 
Anyway. Absolutely. So, what about that's an- my disappointment. Another disappointment I'm just going to throw out there. UFC London 2. It's a bit of a letdown. A bit of a letdown for me. It was a high bar, Joe. It was a high bar. Yeah. Come on. It was It was very much so. But I'm still disappointed. You got any other honourable mentions there, Tom? At uh, the apex. Yeah. Yeah, gone from being something like novel. Oh, you can really hear the impact. Oh, my, yeah. this is, you know, like a kind of like a science yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> experiment yeah. to like, oh, God, not another. Yeah. Not another. Yeah, no Event more, please. Apex. Right. Let's talk about breakout star of the year. Now, Tom, I'm going to leave the comfy waters of the UFC and I've got to choose another Brit. Brendan Lufnane, you absolute ledge. You built your name on the Contenders Series win in which Dana then insulted you and everyone thought that's bang out of order and you go over and win a million dollars in the PFL. Mate, what a, what an absolute stud. Five fights in a year to get it done as well. That is, he, he is a machine to have been able to do that and to dominate in all of them and then in the fifth fight get the finish as well. Really, really impressive, Brendan Lufnane. Do you think he's now at, the peak? Do you think the only way is down from here, or do you think he can kick on I think, to even greater heights? I think he can win it again in the PFL. I think he can go on and win it again. He was so comfortable in all his fights. I mean, not that he took it easy. But he was comfortable because of how like how skilled he is and how like how dominant he was over these guys. But I've seen him out there a lot more now. So I'm getting interviewed on Sky Sports. He's getting out there a lot more, and now that the PFL's on Channel Four. You know, there's a bit more exposure for him. They come in over here a bit more now. They did three events over in the UK. Brendan Lufnane is, you know, a bit of a casual name. Also with his weird cornering of Darren Till. I don't know if you heard the story of that where Darren didn't have someone to corner him, really. And then he asked Lufnane about six weeks out, oh, do you mind doing it for me? And Lufnane's like, well, I'm not really a coach, but all right. And then... Uh... <laughs> so, yeah. But anyway, Brendan Lufnane, my breakout of the year. Just want to give another award to a Brit. You know. Absolutely. N- nothing wrong with nativism when it's on our pod. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> now, Joe. Yeah. Is he going to get a call from Dana White, Brendan? <laughs> no. Is he going to eat his words? No, Dana will never will do that. No, no. I don't. Th- I. I mean, the thing is, Lufnane's not young. He's been around a bit. You know, he's a very experienced fighter. And if I was him, I would just ride out the PFL and make yourself a face of that division. Um, by the way, that's the division that Shane Burgos is going to be fighting in as well. So, Lufnane versus Burgos. Oh, my word. How's, how's Burgos going to cut weight five times in a year? <laughs> like, that's well, yeah. don't, don't pop the balloon, Joe. Yeah. It's not going to happen. I'll tell you right now. Okay. Okay, my breakout star of the year. I am a loyalist. I'm a company man, so I stay within the UFC. Okay. Um, and I wrote down three names here. Yeah. Uh, now... I had decided on our winner for this, mm. for the breakout star, and then I reread the award title, and the word star is in it. Mm. So, Sergei Pavlovich, you were so close, but you're not quite there. Wow! You're not quite there. You're not there because, although you have come from complete obscurity, you know, I think he had a 2 and one record, he had taken most of 2021 out, injured, Yeah. Um, and then he's gone in and just absolutely smoked. Bad him. debut as well. Yeah, the bad yeah, debut. Against yeah, against Overeem. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But that was a, that's a long time ago now, Joe. Three first round knockouts. <laughs> Two of them yeah. sub-minute, aren't they? Like it... uh, Nought to 100 in <laughs> faster than a Tesla. Yeah. I mean, absolutely electric performances. But is he a star? Uh, for me, yes, but no. It's because there's no promo. There's no promo. Yeah. But yeah, so yeah, exactly. Start, I, 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 yeah, that's that's the issue. And then there's the uh, man can't help where he was born, but Russia. Yeah, disappointment of the year. You're in there too. <laughs> um, so it isn't Pavlovich, although you know electric, and nobody's going to question him going for the belt uh, sometime this year. I think I know who you're going to pick, but go for it. Well, Joe, I'm not sure you do. Okay. Uh, I picked Alex Pereira. That's who I thought you were going to pick, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I thought, because, you know, we do like a bit of uh, a bit of Eng- English bass fighters. Uh, Mohamed Makayev, I thought you might be. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, th- I think I thought his second performance wasn't that great. The one against Charles Jordan. I thought, you know, it was strong, but, you know, not as impressive. He never looked in danger one. of losing that fight. No, no, that's true. I think next year will be... An interesting one for him, but we'll talk about him in a sec. 
We will, yeah. Uh, is Pereira... Now, I mean, let's just look where this man was this time last year. He had had a very iffy performance against Michelidis. Yeah. Where he pulled out, if I'm, unless I'm mistaken, it was a flying knee. Yeah, switch, kind of jump Kind pulled knee. it out of the bag. Yeah. Jump knee, right? Jump knee, yeah. Uh, and he had struggled a little bit on the mat, having been taken down earlier in that fight. Yeah. Looked pretty limited. A nice, fun distraction. You know, something to talk about in reference to Adesanya, but quite a long way off from actually getting matched up with him. Joey's the champ. He just knocked out the most dominant middleweight we've had for quite a while yeah. uh, in Israel. A man that... No, a puzzle that nobody could solve... He knocked him out, Joe. Yeah. He's he, the champ. He also had the the knockout over Strickland, which that could have been a contender for knockout of the year as well, or finish of the year. Uh, he also had the decision win over Bruno Silva, which I found that that one was quite like, okay, this guy's got something to him. This is limited in these very clear ways, and this is how you're going to have to fight him. But if you're going to beat this guy, you have to wade into the fire and... Oh boy, is it a fire. And Strickland and Adesanya in the end found out. Pereja. Do you know what also adds to the star element? Is like, this guy's like a killer. This guy's a psychopath. Like, he's truly dead eyed, cold, like, murderer, this guy. Yeah. Like, he just doesn't care. And then when you hear yeah, about. He has, he has an aura. He's one of those yeah. fighters who really has an energy to him. I imagine the room quiets. The eyes. I, I, yeah, I, the eyes avert. They start looking down at the sofa and uh, mm. looking anywhere else because Pereira's definitely got a presence to him. Yeah. You can feel it in the walkouts. You can feel it in the way he carries himself. And look at the build on the man. Yeah. I mean, he's, uh, he's the Terminator, Joe. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Uh, can I give you one more honorable mention as well? Please. Uh, the flyweight division. I actually felt this was a... And when I go back to the breakout thing, I honestly think that, like, it really bloomed this year. And there were some tremendous fights and performances that one we'll get to in a second. Um, that I just... Yeah, I feel like it finally gained proper credibility this year. Even without... Oh, well, with only two title fights, one being an interim title fight as well. But, yeah, very, very impressed with how flyweight sort of... Has, again... Kind of like lightweight, but refreshed. There's a there's a freshness and an excitement to it that is that is there now. Right now, Tom. Some people think this is the biggest award that you can give, but we're gonna put it as the co-main fight of the year. And Tom, I want you to reveal what you're thinking in terms of the fight of the year. Well, uh, it has been a year of great fights. There's a lot that goes into picking this award. We want high-level skills. We want a comeback story. We want evenly matched opponents. Hopefully a blend of skills on display. Mm. Um, And then you've also got the occasion, the event. It's not easy. The drama drama of the fight itself, what's happening within there. Yeah, the the, the chemistry between the two guys, what's the lead-up, the context. Um. So, <laughs> come on, lay it on me. <laughs> Having given you the criteria, Joe, I'm gonna uh, now dismiss all of that <laughs> and just tell you the fight that I picked. It doesn't match some of those things. I picked Joe Sarukian versus Gamrot. Wow! Did you really? I did. Now I'm gonna have to defend that because I don't think it's something that's no. On I don't think you have to of, defend it. And it. Well, it's not on, gonna be on the top of a lot of people's lists mm. um it's not me trying to say that i'm a true aficionado of the sport <laughs> and i don't love the blood and guts violence that you see in the likes of um well let's say Poirier and chandler yeah, for example for example um but i picked this one because it was just constant reversals switches counters uh highly too highly evolved grappling games it was a true demonstration of what high-level mixed martial arts can be. Mm. There was nobody able to hold the other man down for any sustained periods. There were Granby rolls. There were fighters balancing on one leg. And I'm just talking about the first round. Yeah. And it just kept on going like that. They were neck and neck. Hard to split them apart on the judges' scorecard. It was just a real uh, exhibition yeah. for what, what grappling can be at the highest level. Yeah, and how that was blended into a striking game as well. From both of them. I mean, some people think it's a contentious win for Gamrot. It is slightly, but again, I doesn't. Uh, for me, neither guy loses anything in that fight. It's a tremendous, tremendous fight. And to be honest, I think that's kind of like last year. Me and you both picked 
Pieter Jan versus Corey Sandhagen as the fight of the year. And I think this fight is of that sort of making. High level, skilled MMA that if it's like, people are like, oh, it's just like two bouncers having a scrap. You know, like I remember I've seen comments like that even now where it's just like something that you see on a Friday night, which is nonsense, obviously. I would show them Pieter Jan versus Corey Sandhagen. I would show them Armand Sarukin versus Mateus Gamera. Yeah, absolutely, Joe. I think you, I think you called it there. And and just to emphasize again one more time, it's it. I mean, for me, like I still see uh, kind of wrestling, uh, top heavy pressure mm. as the dominant art form. Yeah. And a man who's at the peak of his powers in that regard is Armin Sarukian. Yeah. But Gamrot's defense was so active; he was so hard to pin down. The scrambles, Joe. Just unbelievable in that fight. It was just non-stop action, and I just love to see an answer to that mm. top-heavy wrestling game. For sure. Now, when I come to my fight of the year, I, I go through all that criteria that Tom says, and then I think about the fights I enjoyed most this year, that were most dramatic. And it's you know, there's no real surprising picks there. But there was one fight this year where, I, when I was watching it, I almost couldn't look at it. And then I was so drawn into it that I stood up and I was pacing the room watching this fight like I couldn't believe what I was looking at. And that fight was for the light heavyweight title between Yuri Prohashka and Glover Teixeira. I've honestly, like, the light heavyweight division for the longest time was the golden division. It was the premier division. And this was, like, something from its peak. Like, this was absolutely sublime craziness. I, I couldn't look at it at points of like, oh my god, this like how is they not how have they not finished each other? Endless back and forth, rocking each other. It was blood and guts drama. It was like in the Coliseum. It was it was it was crazy. It was absolutely crazy. And the craziest thing about it is that Yuri Prohashka, down on the scorecards, subs Glover to Shara. I get chills just thinking about it. It was absolutely crazy. It's the, uh, if that's it. Like, people talk about, like, Poirier versus Chandler. That fight's crazy. No, 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 no. That fight was very exciting. This was crazy. The amount of times where I thought, like, oh, my God, Glover's knocked out Prohashka. Oh, my God, he's still moving. Oh, my God, he's throwing it. Like, minute to minute, second to second, the drama of it was just, it was almost too much to handle for me, Tom. Yeah, Joe, uh, you absolutely, you've, Called it, yeah. uh, and and the fact it was over five rounds with Prohashka eventually besting Glover. Uh, only just. It was sensational. Yeah, I mean, really, only just. Really shocked me the level of performance that Glover was able to find in that 43-year-old mm. man's body. Yes. Because he looked amazing, and he pushed Yuri to the brink. He did. It was an in- incredible fight. Of course, I've got it written down here. I have no... Uh, no problem calling that the fight of the year for yeah. Holden and Tom. Yeah, Glover. and same for Saryukin Gamrot. If that is a, again, it's the two sides of the high level, isn't it? Just like, you know, the the mental fortitude. Like both of them showed like championship mentality of like I've just got to keep pushing. I've got to keep going. It was incredible. Now I got to talk about my honorable mentions. One of them. Again, we talk about car, uh, comeback, we talk about the drama, we talk about skill, we talk about Matt Schnell versus Suma Derji. That fight was absolutely... I've watched that fight about four or five times now. Like, it is incredible, that fight, and the heart shown by both of those guys in that fight, particularly Schnell, who... There's a great moment where the ref's telling Schnell, who looks like he's knocked on his feet, fight back. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> fight back. So he does, and... The triangle choke at the end where he's covered in Suma Deji's blood. The commentary going wild. Nothing quite like it. That's one of my honourable mentions, Tom. Have you got an honourable mention for us? Well, we gave a little nod to Poirier versus Chandler, but that was just high-octane, yeah. explosive. It was Michael Chandler, Joe. It's just what, yeah. what you get. And uh, like, Poirier was rocked. Chandler was rocked. Yeah. There was blood everywhere. There was blood in the mouth. There was blood on the face. Yeah. Blood on the bodies. It was an absolute war. Yeah. A lot of fun. And Poirier, unofficial champ of the violence weight division, beat yeah. Chandler, 
beat Gaethje, beat Eddie Alvarez, and has beat Connor twice as well. Man's a beast. Man's a beast. Beat Dan Hooker. Beat Max Holloway. What a what a war that was against Dan Hooker. Yeah, poor Eddie. He just keeps delivering. That's what you get. You sign either of these guys on the to fight. It's going to be it. You ha- it's must watch TV. How about how about Darius versus either of these guys? Oh my word! The violence that would be on display. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. I mean, please, please, please. If there's anything I want for Christmas, <laughs> it's it's oh, it's Darius fighting the best guys. Now I'm going to talk about this fight as well, just quickly. I found myself. Well, this is the second fight this year that I stood up and was pacing. And I was emotional watching it. <laughs> Paolo Costa versus Luke Rockhold. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. I've never. It was like again. It was like a movie where like Rockhold is clearly washed and done, but he just can't help himself. He can't help himself throwing crescent kicks, three sixty round landing, pass, landing them, kicks. and after Costa, being completely washed out in that first round. Yeah. For me, that is a story. And what could have been? I just I want more Luke Rockhold. I'm not ready to let it go, Joe. That was oh. so good that fight. <laughs> and I honestly, I think he could. I think he could beat Paolo Costa. He could. It's just, it went. It's just started so terribly. Yeah. For uh, him. And then also, fight. there's the great bit as well where he's there's that low blow that Costa landed where he thought he knocked it. He got the TKO off of a low blow. <laughs> he runs off and celebrates. And Rockhold's he's got five minutes to recover, and he's dazed and whatnot. And his corner is standing out, going like, "Take the five minutes." Take the five minutes, Luke. They're begging him to do it. And he's like, okay, okay, I'll take it. And you could see, like, the emotional, like, whatever. And Luke, he stood there for, like, a minute. Three. He's like, nah, I've got to go back in. Mouthpiece back in. Let's go. He doesn't take the five minutes. And then the rubbing of the blood all up in Costa's face and Costa smiling. I, I it's, 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 it's beautiful. And then the retirement speech afterwards where he goes, like, fuck, I'm old. <laughs> like, it's so good. It was so yeah, good. it makes it into any montage of 2022. It, it was fantastic. Right, fighter of the year. Yeah, for me, this is the premier award. Uh, we debated it a little bit before coming on here, but it's like who's going to be crowned at the top of the mountain? You stand alone. Yeah. You don't need a dance partner partner to win this award. Mm. And um, I think it's an interesting one. I couldn't say I immediately know who you're going to lean towards here, mm-hmm. Joe. Um, I myself have written down three names. Same. Uh, one of those men has already received an award. Same. That man is Pereira. Yeah. Again, from nothing to everything in, in just three fights. Mm. Um, I won't say any more about that because I didn't end up giving him the award. Who did you give it to? Well, I have two more names left after that. Don't give us uh, the don't give us the honourable mention. Give us who you who you who you, you, you want to hear. Yeah, I want to hear who's won it. Uh, my main man, he comes from down under. He's Alex Volkanovsky. Yeah. Now look, this has been a year of uh, champs being dethroned. Yeah. Men falling from the top of the mountain, previously seen as unconquerable, mm. problems that can't be solved. Kamara Usman, he's no more. Yeah. Adesanya, he's gone. Charles Oliveira, beautiful while it lasted, but it's <laughs> finished. There's one more name left there, Joe, and that's Alex Volkanovsky. He finishes the year as the pound for pound champ. Mm. Uh, he there was one question mark against Alex Volkanovsky, and that was Max Holloway. Yeah. They're pretty evenly matched. After Aldo, is it is it Max who's the next mm. to be? Pound for pound, uh, the sorry, the featherweight goat, yeah. It's not Joe, it's no. uh, Volkanovsky absolutely d- dismissed him. Uh, those two names will not be in the same conversation again. It won't be known as an all time rivalry because Volkanovsky closed the book on yeah. Max, and of course, he beat Chan Sung Jung so bad we wanted the towel thrown in. That's a man who's in the rankings near the top, yeah. Volkanovsky was levels ahead, and to cap it all off, he's matched up now with Islam Makachev, a man who has looked pretty imperious in his rise, a man who hasn't shown any cracks in his game bar that one freak knockout shot, mm. that one risk he took, which he doesn't take anymore. And Volkanovski wants the fight. He's not waiting for um, 
you know, Bisping to somehow become the middleweight champion <laughs> coming out of retirement to fight him. <laughs> Talking about UGSP. Yeah. He's going to fight the very best, the most difficult man in a weight class above who's got reach, who's got weight, who's got skill. Mm. And he's ready for it, Joe. And it's a fight that makes sense. I love it. Alex Volkanovsky, you are my fighter of the year in 2022. Tom? My fighter of the year is Alexander Volkanovsky, and it's for all those reasons you said, and so much more. I mean, the man, we talk about the skill, and he is undoubtedly so skilled, and his game is levels ahead of everyone pretty much in the UFC in terms of all elements of mixed martial arts and making himself a mixed martial artist. But what I'm going to focus on is the heart, the mentality of this man. And he's demonstrated it before. People go on the Ortega fight as like, oh my God, I can't believe he came back and from that triangle choke and from that um, mounted gear team and won that round, really, and beat the tar out of Ortega. I think of the second Holloway fight where he's clearly two rounds down and he comes out aggressive, fainting aggressively. I'm doing my game and I'm doing it to the max right now to get this fight. And he wins those last three rounds. And then the beating of Zombie, which was just superb, Show that there's levels to this game. Who's going to step up to me? Well, it's Max Holloway. And he he didn't even do his usual game. He didn't faint. Didn't do any of that stuff. He just beat him up. Beat him up comprehensively. No question about it. And to do that to Max Holloway, that makes you the fighter of the year for me. Yeah. He's just he's just leveled up, Joe. He just keeps on evolving. Yeah. He does. Um, All right. Who's, look- who's your third name? I've got yeah, I got, I, got, I got to get this man into the pod. I got to talk about him. I've talked about him before, Joe, and I'm going to talk about him again. He only fought once this year, but what a fight it was! Not for actually what took place in the fight, but the circumstances behind it. Of course, I'm talking about Francis Ngannou, still the heavyweight champ. Yeah. He, I mean, let's just recap it one more time for the fans. <laughs> one more time around, around the, uh, uh, you know. <laughs> Around the circle. Yeah. It's uh, back in March, I believe. January. January. That's how long ago it was. And that's yeah. why it's probably not many people thinking about Francis Ngannou right now. Uh, he has been matched up with Cyril Garn. Cyril Garn has looked unstoppable. And he's a big problem for Ngannou. Mm. He's fast. He can measure distance. His timing is great. He's a diverse striker. He's shown no weakness in his chin. He's a really, really tough matchup. And then Nganu blows his knee out, getting ready for the fight. Mm. The last fight, I believe, on his contract. Yes. And he's been lobbying for a new pay deal. He's not going to get it. No. He loses that fight. He has no leverage. He's out on his ass. He's lost it all. Yeah. Now, Joe, I'm talking about 99% of fighters in the UFC... They're injured. They can't fight. Yeah. They call it off. There's no need to go in there. Don't take those risks. You're a professional athlete. Yeah. But he took that risk, Joe. He took that risk. He was struggling. He was down a couple of rounds. Yeah, he was losing the fight. 2-0 down. 2-0 down. <laughs> and then he got DC to utter those infamous words. <laughs> He's doing jiu-jitsu. Francis is doing jiu-jitsu. Joe, he took him down. He caught the kick. He took Garn down, surprised him, and he saw out the fight. He got it done. It was incredible. That was, again, like Volkanovski, championship heart mentality. The whole thing. And honestly, the biggest disappointment of the year is that we didn't get a second Francis fight. UFC, you are a jabron. Sign this man. Give him all the money. We want him back. My... Other honourable mention, along with Pereja, was Zhang Weili. Uh, dismisses Yun Jacek. Back fist, spinning back fist knockout. Face down, ass up. Knockout of Yun Jacek into retirement. And then comes back in November and smokes Esparza on the ground, which is where Esparza is supposed to be. Brutal crucifix into a RNC rear naked choke. It was very impressive from Zhang Weili, who is... The women's fighter of the year, quite clearly. Undoubtedly. Now, Tom, me and you are now quickly going to go through the divisions in the UFC, starting at heavyweight and going back down. We're going to make a pick. Just a little prediction that we have for the year. And I'm going to start with heavyweight, Tom. And I'm going to say it. At the end of 2023, he may not be the champ, 
but he will undoubtedly be the number one contender. He's going to do it. It's going to be Curtis Blades, brother. He is going to do it. I, I, I can just feel it. He's turned the corner, and he is going to be undeniable by the end of 2023, either as the champ or as the guaranteed straight-up number one contender. He's the ever-present man. He mm. is becoming a bit of a, a Leon Edwards, you know. What more does he have to do? Yeah. Uh, Joe, it's a, it's, a good, it's a good pick. I want to see him fight Cyril Garn. That's what I want. Oh. Splooge. What do you what do you have for heavyweight? I have uh the UFC to break the hearts of fans everywhere. No. <laughs> and let Francis Ngannou go. Uh bring the division into disrepute. Have the true greatest heavyweight on the planet sitting out, mm. fighting some exhibition fights in boxing yeah. and uh no longer associated with the UFC. Yeah. I'm sorry to say it. That's what everything's pointing to for me. Please don't let it be so. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to light heavyweight, um, I don't know if... In my, this is kind of like my... Maybe this is a bit far out there. But I'm going to say by the end of 2023, I don't think Glover Ch- Teixeira is going to be the champion. <laughs> I don't think Yuri Prohashka is going to be the champion. I don't think Magomed Ankalaev is going to be the champion. I don't think Jamahal Hill is going to be the champion. Light heavyweight champion at the end of 2023 will be Alex Pereja. Oh. Oh. Oh, I see what you're doing there. Yeah. Come uh, chase me up here, Izzy. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, I like it. Yeah. Now, does he do that via bit losing to Robert Whitaker at middleweight? <laughs> and then moves up? No, I think he defends against Izzy. Maybe he wins, maybe he loses. And then he's just like, I ain't cutting this again. See you later, Rob. You ain't beating me, son. And then off he goes up to light heavyweight. And I think he... Honestly, honestly, the only hope these guys have is that they can take him down. Because if they ain't taking him down, then he's he's knocking them out. I mean, what about if Ryan Spann actually trains? <laughs> oh my god! What about Pereja versus Paul Craig? What's going to happen there? What if he knocks him down? And he goes down there. Oh my word, Tom! What do you? What have you got? The for meme ability truly does go up. At the oh, by the way, higher. one of the top meme fighters of the year, Paul Craig. I got to say it as well. Undoubtedly, uh, yeah. Undoubtedly. <laughs> anyway, light heavyweight, Tom. Uh my prediction for light heavyweight is nothing too electric. It's another year of mediocrity. And uh, I'm looking mm. at Glover Teixeira. I'm looking at Jan Blachowicz. I'm also starting to think about guys. Yeah, like, and, and I'm thinking they're all, they're all kind of fading away. Um, yeah. I, they, what they need, they need someone to cup the fire. They had it in Yuri Pahashka. Unfortunately, it's no longer with us in the fighting world. Mm. Um, and I just don't see who that next man's going to be. You don't think there's... I mean, I, when I look at light heavyweight, it's quite an old division, and I think there's retirements awaiting. Yeah. Glover, Jan's 40-ish, Anthony Smith, you know, Dominic Reyes. You look at the injuries as well. Yeah, to, Rakic. To Rakic, to Prahashka. Yeah. I just... Uh, I just don't see anybody breaking through you, i don't have a name you don't think what if jamahal wi- wins in january do you think he would hold the title until the end of the year well joe i don't think he's going to beat glover to share but if he okay but if he does beat glover to share i think that's what the ufc kind of wants isn't it like or do they want to have yeah. the rematch of glover versus yuri i don't know anyway tom let's move on to middleweight i mean what are you what are you feeling here for middleweight i'm feeling Mark three, chapter three, Bobby Knuckles. Yes! Sitting on top yes! at the end yes! of the year. By any means necessary. Yes. Uh, no, just dodging that fight with Adesanya. Yeah. And uh, and sneaking in one more championship belt for the mantelpiece. Uh, he's too good not to. He beats Pereira if that matchup happens. And he avoids Adesanya smartly. He sneaks mm. in. Maybe Ad- Adesanya's injured. Maybe he's distracted because he's doing some kind of uh, acting work for an anime production. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Whitaker takes his moment and he's back. The fans love him. He's the feel-good story of 2023. Yeah, I think 20, if 2023 doesn't have a Robert Whitaker title fight in there, then something seriously bad has happened. Like, something wrong has happened. Um, yeah, I, I totally totally agree 
with that. And that's my pick as well. Robert Whittaker title fight in 2023. Now, one last mention of the middleweight, Joe. There is a man on this list I nearly put down for breakout fighter. Chris Curtis? No. <laughs> Roman Delice. Oh, I was actually thinking Duplessis. But yeah, Delice is a good shout. Yeah. Joe, there's some fun there's some fun guys coming through here. You mentioned Duplessis. You mentioned Chris Curtis. We're going to lose Munez. Joaquin Buckley. Andre, Andre Muniz. Imabov. We're, yeah, we've got middleweight. I don't know. It's bubbling away. We've got some potential. Paolo Costa's still there. You know, we've got some fun fights. Right, welterweight. And I am going to say it. I'm going to say it. 2023 is the year that Shavkat Rachmanov becomes undeniable as well. Much like Curtis Blades, I don't know if he's going to be the champion, but at the end of 2023, it's going to be like, well, he has to fight for the title. There is no one else that can fight for it other than him. Shavkat Rachmanov. And you know what? Screw it. Just Let's just make Shavkat versus Hamzat right now. Let's just do it. Like, what, what are we waiting for? What are we waiting for? Let's just do the fight and see what happens. But Shavkat is my show. Right, yeah, you've been on that train for a while now. Yeah. Uh, somebody recognised the man, Shavkat Rachmanov. I'm picking another man uh, from the former CIS. It's <laughs> Hamzat Chimaev. My prediction is for him to bring the sport into disrepute oh, wow. in 2023. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking Khabib flying from the cage. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm thinking... <laughs> You're really all in on Trolleys that. in the bus. You're I'm all- thinking... <laughs> Bomb threats. I'm thinking some some problems, Joe. You're all in on this Jack Slack theory, on it, I mean, aren't you? Of like he's a bit simple. <laughs> I think that plays into it. I think his relationships with certain characters in the Caucasus very yeah. troubling, and I really think that is a powder keg waiting to go off. Fair enough. Fair enough. Lightweight. Here's my pick, and it hurts. Charles Oliveira will find his level, and it's not at the top of the division. I think he needs to have a very pick and choosing of who he faces. If I'm him, you do not face Armand Sarukian. You know, you do not face Isma Gulov. Or him versus Dariush. I don't know, man. I don't know. I think you've got to start recognising Benil Dariush. Oh, did you? Oh, what let I'm me saying... just remind you of what he did to Mashayush Gamera. Oh, no, no. What I'm saying is, is that I don't like that for Charles. No, that's the, yeah. I don't yeah. like that at all for him. Right. So I think Oliver will find his level. I'm not saying he's not going to win, but my God, I think he could be in a bit of trouble. You're saying there's too many damn good wrestlers at lightweight coming through. I and think, if you're going to be at the top division, you're going to have to fight them. I, I think his jujitsu doesn't scare some of these guys. And they're just going to mm-hmm. dive straight in and look at like whatever. Anyway, Tom, what about you? Yeah, uh, I, I think you are right, Joe. Actually, my prediction is on the same lines and that is for this division to be cleared out of anyone who doesn't have a background in combat sambo <laughs> <laughs> damn Jalen Turner you're in trouble son <laughs> you're Jalen Turner Dan Hooker uh even guys like Fazeev Joe I, I just see oh wow uh, yeah I really see the cream of the wrestling crop rising to the top here mm. um I'm talking about Dariush talking about Sharukian, I'm talking about Kuta Taladze coming into the into the picture as well yeah. and, um, and Dariush who I'm also putting in that grouping after that show against Gamrot Gamrot yeah. by the way he's a solid top 5 gatekeeper yeah. he can't beat Gamrot he can't hang with the big time no more Dustin Poirier no more Justin Gaethje no more Charles Oliveira I think we're going to be angry at the end of the year if Gaethje is still ranked <laughs> or ranked highly I, th- I think we might be in that sort of realm now featherweight We've got an interim title fight on the line. We've got... And we don't know, really, when Volkanovski will be fighting again after the Makachev fight, depending on if he wins or if he loses, or how he wins or loses, what his uh, appeal is there. But again, I'm going to choose, much like welterweight and heavyweight, I'm going to choose a guy who's undeniable. And I've... You're going to make fun of me, but it's Arnold Allen, baby. He's coming. He's coming on strong. The man from Ipswich... He is going to come on strong, and I think he will be... You know, I, I'm going to say he's going to fight for the title. Could Arnold Allen be the first man on a nine-fight win streak to then win Breakout Star of the Year? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, I think he might. I think he might. If he can fight Volkanovski this year, if he, if Arnold Allen can get a fight in in March and then another one in June and July, line himself up for December. Like, if wherever they unify, 
the interim with the featherweight, Arnold Allen says, I'm fighting on that card. Or I'm fighting the week before. Like, I am in that area. So, Arnold, please, just keep teasing Ortega. You know, talk a bit of crap with him, because I think you can beat him, okay? Arnold, come on, you can do it for England. Joe, uh, I also have a novel pick at featherweight, and that is <laughs> for it. Well, <laughs> it's... Um, Arnold Allen beating Volkanovski, that's a novel pick. Okay. I, I'm saying Featherweight is going to return to relevance. Oh! Uh, now, look, we were talking about the best divisions. We talked about Flyweight. We talked about Bantamweight. We skipped Featherweight and went straight to Lightweight. It's been that way for a while. Yeah. Now, I think Volkanovski goes up, he fights Makachev. However that goes, I think he wants some more Lightweight action. Really? I think that man is a competitor. I do not think he can take a defeat and move back down to featherweight. Uh, he is not Israel Adesanya going up to light heavyweight. I think his new division is lightweight either way. Wow. You, now, you think he's going to be looking at that division thinking like, if I beat Poirier, I can get another title shot straight away. Like, you're, I, I, like that'll be his thinking. Yeah, I just think, for, yeah, I mean, yeah, really. I, I just don't, I think it's too much for him. He is absolutely, you look at the way he's approached those Holloway fights, the willingness to go in there. There were still questions about me beating Holloway. The judges gave it to me both times. Mm. You want me to do it again? Yeah. All right, I'll do it again. Yeah. No doubt this time. No doubt this time, Joe. I think that man is an, we talked about mentality. I think he's a pit bull. I think he's a dog. And I do not think he will let Makachev get away with a win. Okay. Um, He will have more to prove. Now, what does that do to featherweight? You take out Volkanovski, Holloway retires, and you've got then suddenly you start to look at the spaces opening up. You look at Evloev, Teporia, um, Arnold Allen, of course, potentially Yaya Rodriguez, Brian Ortega. I think it's going to go through a resurgence. I think it's going to return to prominence. Okay, I like that. I like that. Well, let's talk about this then. Your division of the year, Bantamweight. Tom, you love Bantamweight. What are you loving for next year? I'm loving the fact that Bantamweight will, again, defend the belt for being the most exciting division. <laughs> it's undeniable, Joe. I'm predicting that on the UFC ranking page next year, you will have to go up to 25 places in ranked <laughs> positions just in for Bantamweight. Just for Bantamweight. Just for Bantamweight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Bantamweight exclusive. Uh, I just, yeah, I just think it's too good. My concern, Joe, my concern is what about if Aljamain or Mirab smother the division well I don't think Aljamain will I think he is legitimately going to move up because he is massive and I don't know about Marab uh, there's an interesting fight that was just booked by the way number 6 Rob Font is facing unranked Adrian Yanez in April if Yanez he's, win- he's, he's at 13 coincidentally oh is he at 13 sorry yeah, my mistake my that's, what, that's how they do it Jeff. that's okay. how match make him 101 right uh, I love that I love that and if Yanez wins get him up there into that number 6 position from there uh, to be honest, I really don't have much... I can't really pick anything here other than I think that there's certain names there that are going to be brushed aside out of the rankings this year. I'm looking at you, Dom Cruz. I'm looking at you, Pedro Munoz. And I'm kind of looking at you, Rob Font. Like, I think that this is... You ain't going to be in there much. It's a young man's division. Yeah, man. This is uh, 30 and under, pretty much. Like, I think this is going to be it. Also, I've just clocked here that Sean O'Malley is actually ranked at number one. Um... Man, a Sean O'Malley title fight. Uh, I'm excited for that. Right, flyweight. If you could, if you could, just quickly, Go on. in an ideal world for the title, Sean O'Malley versus Marlon Vera. Yeah, yeah, fantastic, yeah. absolutely fantastic. Well, Vera. what about what about O'Malley versus Cejudo? If Cejudo wins, all <laughs> all built off of that one little argument backstage. All <laughs> uh, right. Anyway, flyweight. I've got a prediction here for you, Tom. Neither Davison Figueredo or Brandon Moreno will be champion. Ah, oh, music to my ears. <laughs> I'm not saying it's going to be Pantoja. I'm not saying it's going to be Manal Cap. I'm not saying it's going to be, you know, uh, Mateus Nicolau. I'm not saying it's going to be Amir Albazi. I'm saying any one of them is going to be the champion. Yeah, Joe, yeah. Now, what we, I said before, we're going to have to talk about flyweight later. I think that this will be the breakout year for flyweight. For me, didn't quite happen mm. this year because you still don't have the depth in terms of the the, the name recognition. Mm. 
Fair your enough. average fan does not know who Jeffrey Molina is. <laughs> he certainly doesn't know who well, Tagir Ulanbekov is. Well, not definitely not anymore for Jeff Molina, as he's going to be cut from the UFC due to betting on the UFC after being told not to. And oh, who's his coach? James Krause. Ah, oh, thank you, mate. Right, let's wrap it up here, Tom. You know what I'm really chuffed about in our preview? No mention of John Jones. Uh, let's wrap it up here, listeners. We will. We'll be back throughout the year. We'll be back in a couple of weeks, or in a week's time, to talk about the Gastelum Imavov card. Sadly, Jeff Neal versus Shafkat Rachmanov is no longer on it, but we will persevere regardless. Tom, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for a great year, Joe, and thanks to all the listeners too. Thank Happy you. Happy New Year. Yes, thank you, listeners. And uh, will we be? We will be back soon. And uh, yeah, hope you all had a lovely Christmas and New Year. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.